You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you the thermoelectric effect and how you can make your very own thermoelectric generator. So first I'm going to be talking about how exactly the thermoelectric effect works. And after I show that, we're going to be utilizing that effect to build a thermoelectric generator. Now besides the piezoelectric effect, the thermoelectric effect is probably one of the least known ways to generate electricity. Now to first demonstrate this effect to you guys, I have some aluminum here connected up to a multimeter. And the multimeter is set to read millivolts. And so obviously right now, as you can see, there's no electrical potential inside this aluminum. But watch what happens is I bring one side of the aluminum above this flame. As you can see, the voltage potential across this is rising. This effect of getting an electrical current from a temperature differential is called the thermoelectric effect. Now let's try and take a bit of a zoomed in look at what we are witnessing. So inside of this metal bar naturally, there are lots of electrons. Now if I were to apply a heat to this side, then that heat is going to allow the electrons to move around a little bit more freely within the metal. While the electrons down on this side will stop that limited movement due to that cold. And so due to this more free movement up here, we'll find that more electrons will end up being down here on this cold side than being up here on the hot side. Now this distribution of electrons will give this side a slightly negative charge and the hot side a slightly positive charge. Keep in mind that the charge from one of these cells is going to be so small that it was only a few millivolts on the multimeter. So now you may be wondering, can't we then just take a wire from this negative side and connect it up to the positive side of another cell? Well, the problem with this is that then it will act as a single cell since that is a metal conductor in between them. And so then we end up getting about the exact same thing as if we were to have a single cell. So how can we generate a usable amount of electrical current from this effect? Well, we can do it the same way that these thermoelectric Peltier modules accomplish this job. Well, just as before, the Peltier module will have individual cells. So these outside layer ones could be a metallic substance just like the aluminum that we are using. But in order to combine the cells in series, the trick lies with the cell in between. Rather than being a regular conductor, a type of semiconductor is used. These semiconductors are made up of silicon. Basically, the semiconductor in between is going to be called a p-type semiconductor. This means that on the silicon atom there's going to be a hole where there should be an electron. And in fact, inside the Peltier module, rather than using metal, they use what's called n-type semiconductors. Now n-type semiconductors are going to be just like the metal, except they're going to be quite a bit more efficient. And if we apply heat to the top of all of these, we'll find that the negative semiconductors will still have that positive charge on top, while the positive semiconductor will get a negative charge on top and a positive charge on bottom. For the positive semiconductor, positive particles are actually moving further away from the heat. And this is what gives the cold side that positive charge. And so once we use wires, we can connect up the three cells in series. And this connection in series will generate a larger voltage than what we were receiving before with the single cell. One application of the thermoelectric effect can be found inside this. This is a little thermometer attachment that you can add to a multimeter. Basically what it does is that due to the heat differential, it creates a voltage. And based off of that voltage, it can tell what temperature it is. Now just as most things, this process can be reversed. By that, what I mean is that if we give this setup electricity, one side of it will get hot and one side will get cold. Okay, so here to demonstrate, I have my multimeter set to the temperature reading mode with this as the probe. And I have this Peltier module connected up to this DC power source. So let's go ahead and crank up the voltage on this a bit and we'll see what temperature it gets to. As you can see, this side here is getting extremely hot now at 75 degrees Celsius. And although my multimeter seems to be wigging out, the other side is somewhere around 9 degrees. Now the only problem with this is that as the hot side heats up, it's going to disperse to the other side. And as it does that, this side is going to grow to be less and less cool. Now to combat that problem, you'd normally apply a heat sink to this hot side to make sure that the heat doesn't spread up through it too much. Now these modules are only about $2 each, so let's go ahead and cut this open so you guys can see what's on the inside. Okay, I removed enough of the rubber, so let's go ahead and peel it open. And so as you can see inside of this, there are plenty of those little cells. And in fact, the exact number of cells is shown on the outside of the module, and that appears to be 127. So now that we know a bit on how the thermoelectric effect works, let's learn how we can make a generator out of it. And so for this generator, I put four of these Peltier modules onto a heat sink. Also note that the text on all of them is facing upwards. This one will get a common charge on each of the sides. And then I went through connecting the black wire of this one to the red one of this one, and so on, until I got to around here. And these two wires we're left with are going to be our output wires of the generator. The heat sink was added so that it will disperse the heat more evenly across all the modules. To make sure that the top stays cold, I'm going to use this flask filled up with a water ice slurry. And to give us the heat we need, I'm just going to use this torch I made. And so I'm going to go ahead and place this underneath and watch how quickly the voltage will rise. Now since we're at about 3 volts, we should be able to connect up this small DC motor and see that it'll spin. It's not moving very powerfully, but let me connect up a piece of tape so you guys can see that it's moving. Now as you can see, when I connect it up, the motor spins. Okay, so now we're right around 4.81 volts. And as you can see from this, we're getting around 130 milliamps. Now as you can see, adding a cooler thing on top makes the voltage go way up. Let's go ahead and see the current this is drawing. And the current we're getting now is right around 160 milliamps. 
So with that kind of voltage and with that amount of current, you could charge a cell phone. However, since it's only about 0.16 amps, it would take quite a while to give it a full charge. But in an emergency situation or while camping, this can be a great way to charge up a device that could then help you. And by the way, in a situation like that, rather than using a cold slurry, you could use something like the water from a cold stream. If I wanted more power out of this single setup, I'd probably want to put a heat sink on top of this, as well as another cooling agent on top of the heat sink. Basically, what it would come down to is the bigger the heat difference on the bottom and the top of this, the more power would be generated through this effect. So now you know some of the principles behind the thermoelectric effect and how you can utilize it to generate electricity. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you'd like to see my weekly science videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe buttons that will show up in your subscription news feed. If you guys have a future project you'd like to see, go ahead and let me know either by messaging me on Twitter or leaving it in the comment section below. That's all for today's video, so please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make a low voltage, high current transformer that's capable of melting metal.